Hey everybody, looks like we made it to yet another Wednesday. It's so good to see you. This is part seven of painting the portrait and airbrush, the sultry portrait. Jean Tierney, amazing actress, just incredible beauty. Uh, just so happy to uh, be doing this painting. Hey John, good to see you. How are you my friend? How's everything? So glad you can make it. Uh, let's see, I am going to uh, check out my page and make sure I am, I am here. Let's see, okay, so we have three people watching now, I can see. Willie, how's it going? Good to see you. John's living the dream. That is important, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so, uh, I tried having a new setup you know, in another room in the house, but it just didn't work. So I'm back here where, back where I belong, I guess. So, but Tone, it's good to see you. How are you, my friend? So glad you can make it. So we got, we got a pretty good group here already. So I'm very happy, very happy to see you guys. Part five is always interesting, right? But, um, hey Wendy, good to see you, how are you? So glad you're here. So, nice healthy group so far. I'm happy, how's the picture look? It looks pretty good from my end. What about the sound, guys, sounds good? Now remember, whenever I, I'm gonna jump right into it, but whenever I'm going into it, it's always, very similar to a pitcher when he comes out of the bullpen. He's not going to just face the batter in one pitch. He's going to do some some warm-up pitches, right? He's going to ease into it. He's not going to go crazy into it. So that's uh, basically why I like to come in with the light mixture and then come in with the medium and dark mixture using the two airbrush system. That's a new system that I a new addition to the system and I think it really works I mean if you can uh, you know afford two airbrushes definitely if not that's okay it's not the end of the world but let's just continue just really imp important to have some tight aim right now gonna lower down the air pressure and I'm just gonna just maybe work on doing a little bit of texture here Nothing too crazy. Just make sure it looks like not a flat surface or, you know, one weird tone here. But something that, you know, has the texture of, you know, hairs coming in and out, that sort of thing. Haha, <laughs> say cake. <laughs> That's cool. Cake is always good, right? That's for sure. I mean, good, I had a salad today. Hey, what's up, Bill? Good to see you. What an honor. Always good to see you, Bill. So if you guys haven't seen on Facebook, Bill is actually doing a, uh, which is so cool, he's doing uh, Rocky. I think from Rocky too, we decided, uh, in the India Inks, which is fantastic. So Wendy's gonna go ahead and do cake paintings. <laughs> I think that would be pretty cool. I want to make sure I get this sort of turning thrust here. You see that in her hair? Because it's not going straight up, but it's turning in this direction like that. So I want to try and really get the feeling of the direction of hair. It's very important. Go. Just move, move some of the hairs here. I'm using an aggressive eraser. This eraser is the Faber Castell Perfection 705B. B, the designation is for the brush, and it's a little bit harder than the 705. Actually, the 705A without the B has no brush, but is actually even more aggressive. That's my finding. Wow, cream cheese frosting. That's I'm trying to get rid of that little bit of uh, you know lockdown belly that I got. 
<laughs> and so I did walk for like an hour today. I'm going to try and do that every day. I feel better by doing it. Plus, I'm going to look better, which is even more important. Now, I'm getting a little bit of a shake. Let me see if I can fix that. I think what's happening is, is that it's connected to the tripod is up against the table. So what I can do is lower. Ah. do is make sure that this is not touching the table. So actually if I make the legs taller, bear with me guys. I just didn't like the shaking every time I moved. It's all about you guys. <laughs> so I think that works better. It looks good. And I'll just move back a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. Go back to, back to work. Let's see. So... What we were doing, maybe I can darken her just a bit. Continue with the direction of the hair. These little details I like to do at this stage, at the very end, because the large shapes are so much more important. Hey Mike, good to see you my friend, how are you? And I can use a variety of tools, like this one right here. And Bill showed me, uh, was working on this one last night, and uh, you know, I like cutting it into this little sort of wedge here. And this way I get these like super fine lines. I mean real super fine lines. Yeah, Mike, how's your back? I hope you're feeling better. So you see I can start, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the dark mixture a little bit and I'm going to do the even darker color, darker value. But I want you to think like Johannes Vermeer or Rembrandt, you want to, you want to go ahead and make these changes almost abbreviated. You don't want to be so literal. Um, you know, you look at the portraits of, of William Holman Hunt. Uh, he was a 19th century French Raphaelite. Uh, his work was very detailed, but then if you look at Vermeer, it was detailed, but only the essence was there. So I think both is good, but for me, I like having a sort of shorthand about it. But even those little things that I did there, you just feel more volume in her hair all of a sudden. And then we can continue that throughout. Oh man, sorry to hear that, Mike. See if I darken it just a little bit. Does that help for any? And let's move over here. And I don't want to use waste that beautiful line I have, that straight line, that straight edge on the chisel there. So 
want to make sure that some of these hairs are open-ended, meaning they're not enveloped by anything. Now, the thing is, every painting is pretty much abandoned, right? We never really finish anything. Uh, it pretty much gets to the point where we can just let it go and go on to the next one. Uh, that's how I feel. I never really feel totally complete with a painting. It's always something I could do, but, you know, it has to end, right? It can't continue forever. Okay, so we have some edges here we can work on. Let's go ahead and make that happen. One of the things we would, I was talking about, about uh, something called spidering. Now, spidering is, you know, it's inevitable. There's nothing we can do to avoid it. We really have to control it. Uh, you'll see when I blow up, you can see how you know, how there is spidering, even though you can't see it with the naked eye, when you blow it up, there is spidering. So, it's a, it's natural with airbrush, it's just, you know, we have to try and control it the best we can. <laughs> His phone was in the closet, that's funny. Spiders do have webs, that is true. And that's inevitable for them as well. <laughs> okay, so. So you see, I don't have to go crazy with every little uh, hair or anything like that. I could definitely, uh, you know, do a shorthand here. lots of fuzziness down here and then we have some sharper areas okay so I'm gonna go ahead and load the dark mixture in my extreme Patriot arrow 2 one of the things I like doing is taking the back of a sotar and removing that uh, that control dial back here it gives me a lot more uh, access to the needle and the needle is not hindered by anything. So this is a really good uh, sort of uh, modification as well to my, ex my Extreme Patriot Arrow. You know, you'll see I have a lot of modifications. And so that's, it's important when you work that you, you make, you evolve with the technique, but also you have to uh, have your materials evolve with you, you know, because basically they have to mold to your needs, and that's when you, you know, make sure that you be innovative. Uh, that's very important. <laughs> Tom, yeah, that, yeah, the pandemic, you don't want to go anywhere right now, my friend. Okay, so here in the dark mixture, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit some of the darks here, and but also this, this hard edge. Variety is the spice of life, and especially in a painting, it is as well. Let me make sure that I am in focus. It's just going to be one quick moment, guys. And yeah, you see... Now when I come back, I'll be in much better focus. So that's the beauty of working with a DSLR. So now what I'm, I have to do is I have to look and find those hard edges in this hair here. Because when I put the hard edges, the soft edges are really going to pop out, you know? I think right over here we have a nice hard edge. So like, like I said, I have the dark mixture in my airbrush right now. 
Those are my India ink sets, ink, India ink set, and they're available, of course. The link's in the description. Yes, I said I was going to do some textural areas right here. Just to put some texture in her hair. There we go. My process is very slow and it's very deliberate, but um, that's just my temperament. I don't want to spend too much time in the hair, but I do have to give it a certain amount of attention. I'm going to turn off the fan just for some less noise pollution, but when I get hot, it's going back on. So you see, now I'm able to work in some texture. It's not, it's not just a straight line or a straight area of tone. There's a lot going on. So now I can come in with this eraser and I can put in some more texture using the, the light side of the value area, light side of the value spectrum. There we go. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to, you know, push yourself, push your technique, take it further, take it where it wasn't before, and, uh, you know, really really do things you normally didn't think you were able to do. So I'm going to come back with my dark mixture here. And let's just adjust a little area right here. Just variety. I was just thinking today how variety in life is, in everything in this world, is probably the most beautiful aspects of life, that there are differences. And I don't understand a world where differences are often, you know, frowned upon or looked down upon, but as the differences, I think, is uh, much more exciting, you know? which makes life exciting. I mean, I don't paint like everyone. Uh, you know, different people paint differently. They have different subject matters. They have different backgrounds. And to me, that's exciting. To me, that's, that's what makes things really cool. Really just enjoying the process. And that's what it's all about.
Okay, so right here, we have a nice dark shape. I'm going to protect my model shoulder here. Bring that over. Now, don't stay in the same area because you're going to have some really wicked spidering if you do. So you just keep moving around. It's a beautiful, rich, dark in here. Now, let's move where we are basically uh, feeling like uh, whatever I might be neglecting. Once again, I am in the dark mixture. And keep that whole one second rule going, you know? Meaning that you look a second and you paint a second. And with the one second rule, it's just really going to keep you from going off into your own, own little world of your mind and, you know, keep you from getting out of the game, you know? So that's really important. So definitely feeling like we're we're making some progress in the hair. This is the sort of the end of it, you know, uh, end of the portrait. So right now is when we do the touches that are going to make sense and sort of bring it all together. Like I said, the one second rule is going to keep us from just screwing things up. The hair is very complicated, yes, but our ability to go ahead and simplify things is gonna serve us well. use the uh, aggressive eraser here to like I did before get rid of any pencil lines that might be in here at you know adversely affecting the edges of her hair and the quality of her hair and you see it's working out really well of course I could spend days on this hair you know but the thing is the portrait is not about her hair her hair is an element of who she is, uh, but not necessarily what I want to focus on. More importantly, what I want my audience, the ones who are going to look at this painting when it's completed, I want that. I want to. I want to decide where they're looking. I think every artist who paints needs to have that kind of opinion that it's up to us. To where we're going to make the um, viewer look. And over here, we could work on it. Same thing, it comes out. We have some, some directional lines in there. Same thing out here. And you want to you get some of those directional lines, that's really important. 
the sort of the same thing that if you're doing a portrait, the gessoing is very important. Uh, not the gesso, but the drying. Um, let's see. Hey, what's up, Bill? Good to see you. How are you, my friend? Now I'm back to the light mixture and I'm going to really get in there and look at the amount of detail that you can get with the extreme Patriot Arrow. So anyone out there want to go head to head with me with any airbrush and the extreme Patriot Arrow, I'd be more than happy to. I think this is the best airbrush on the market today with my modifications. So I definitely recommend uh, you know, giving it a try, and for about a hundred dollars, dollar for dollar, it is by far the best airbrush. And that's just my opinion. But if anyone wants to challenge my opinion, let's do it. So, let's see. Wendy, that's very cool that you got the replacement. That's fantastic. See, Badger's really good. They take care of you. No, yeah, definitely have to send the faulty one back. Okay, just pulling up the there's more pupil here, so I'm just going to very lightly show more pupil. Now let's go back with the dark mixture, and I want to darken this side of the eye, but I don't want the contrast to be as strong as this side. Even though this may be darker, it not necessarily mean that the contrast is going to be as strong as in the light. Contrast is always, if you want to make a good painting, contrast always has to be stronger in the light, you know? So back to the dark mixture. Yeah, making it a little more intense, but not crazy. And how you stop spidering, or how do you reduce spidering, I should say. Like I was saying earlier, spidering is sort of, it's going to happen, but you want to lessen it as much as possible. So that's a big difference than saying eliminating spidering, because that's pretty much not going to happen. But you have to know what causes spidering to, to lessen it. So you don't stay in one spot. If you stay in one spot and spray, your surface is going to get filled with ink and then it's going to blow. So that's basically it. The Sotar is incredible. Yeah, I do like the Sotar a lot. I mean, it does have its... Now, which one is the regular Sotar 2020? Because I am partial to the uh, Slim. I think there's something about the Slim that just puts it in a new category as far as SOTARs go. Anyone out there feel the same way about the SLIM? Okay. 
Yeah, me too. The Slim is uh, just a fantastic airbrush. That has to be my second favorite airbrush. So with that dark mixture, I'm just gonna make this a little more intense. You have to have a feeling of the light moving, you know? Uh, that you want to get a feeling of the the washing of light over forms and you want that to be similar throughout that the same light source whether that light source is the Sun or a light or what have you it's moving across the form so that's that's what Vermeer does that's what Angra does uh, art history guys I really can't stress how important, you know, looking at the old masters and seeing what they did. They created paintings. They weren't just painting what was there. They were creating visual dialogues, and that's what we want to do. That's what I want to do. Okay, so where can I go a little bit darker? That's my question. So let's move right over here. One second rule, guys. Always, always one second rule. Don't let that go. But yeah, that, you know, that challenge still is out there. Who wants to challenge me with a $100 airbrush with any other brand with my airbrush? I'll wait. I will wait. So let's just continue. Okay, so I have a beautiful dark right here. And let's... Uh, Move this down. Look at this beautiful line. Yeah, I definitely don't recommend any kind of cordless uh, compressor. You don't want to be fooling with your air source. Just saying. So if you have no choice, of course. Well, Wendy, I can tell you that in a private message later, okay? So, Wendy, you know, she, you know, if, if someone wants to private message me, I can tell you how I go ahead and modify this airbrush to be a detail airbrush, better than just about anything on the market, so go for it. So you can message me if you want to go ahead and find out how I go ahead and modify this airbrush to be one of the best detail airbrushes in the world.
Okay, so you see how right now everything's sort of kind of falling into place, and that's what you want. You want to have that feeling of things falling into place. So now I have my dark mixture. I can go in and really do those real dark accents. So this is the part where I do the dark accents. See that right there? Now all of a sudden, that shoulder is starting to come forward, and that insignia is starting to go no, not a Frankenstein brush at all. This is uh, basically something that takes the best of several airbrushes to make an airbrush that is far and beyond everything else. So, Will, you let me know if you, uh, you want some information. I think a Frankenstein brush would be something that, you know, maybe I just, you know, haphazardly changed this for that or anything like that. But this is working with these airbrushes, this airbrush, every day for six to eight hours. And then I'm going to, you know, eventually start coming up with something a little stronger or, you know, a little bit better than, you know, market market airbrushes that come off the assembly line. You know, it's different when you have somebody using it that could say, hey, I'd like to see this, or this doesn't work as well for me, let's do that. Uh, those who have used my modifications have never come back to me and said, Tim, it's not as good. They will always say, Tim, you just turned it into something else, so yeah. It's not a Frankenstein brush. going to stay with the hair too much but you can see just as I'm going along very slowly the hair is starting to come together and also have that ebb and flow of things going in and going out and that's what we really want. brush. <laughs> Maybe a turbo. Okay, so now I'm pretty okay with the hair again. Now I'm going to keep moving back and forth. As you know, I like to think fluidly, fluidly or with fluidity when working, you know. Same thing over here. I'm just going to darken this up just like that. So, you know, I'm still squinting my eyes and asking myself, you know, where are the really dark accents and, you know, where can I put those dark accents where it would, you know, tweak a brush. That's pretty good. Where can I go ahead and uh, make the most impact? And it's with that squinting of the eyes you, you really see what that is, you know?
and then I'm going to start coming in with those really uh, light highlights here just to give a little more that's the bad thing about uh, Iwata's you really can't you can't mess with them too much they don't have that interchangeability that the Badgers have when we were, you know, blocking this in, we were blocking in general tones, and now we're getting very specific, and we're sort of, uh, you know, looking for the tonal variations within the shapes. Yeah, the uh, microns are amazing, but they are very delicate, Wendy, I agree. I, I agree to a certain extent. It is the person holding it, but I remember my first airbrush, and I think when you're, when we're beginning, the most that the airbrush can do for the artist is really important. I would hate to uh, give an artist who's starting out an airbrush that is inferior. Yes, an advanced airbrush artist can make anything work to some extent, but someone starting out, they need a really good control airbrush that's really going to take care of them and I think that's the problem that a lot of people starting out is they start out with the wrong airbrush and the wrong paint for that matter not the wrong brand I'm not going to bash any brand but there are paints that are more geared to uh, to beginners and that's important Okay, so now we can go ahead and maybe start working in some of these lights here. And let's use this right here. It's so great that we can get these really sharp lines with this particular eraser. Now, let's see if we can take our bonds and quarter. And we have to be very careful. Pressure like anything else. When you pull back the trigger, you get more value. Uh, same thing, when you add the pressure or not pressure to this bonds and quarter or any paint pencil or paintbrush or what have you, you're going to uh, get less less of that that medium so one second rule I'm just going to continue looking look long and paint short that's the one second rule yeah the Badger 150 is not a very good first airbrush that is probably one of the worst first airbrushes you can get. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that's not your main airbrush. That's for someone with a lot of experience. I'm sorry, I'm gonna tell it like it is. I love Badger, but 
I am going to tell it like it is. That's not my favorite airbrush in the world. Let's continue this right over here. I'm not going to go crazy, but this is really important, though. I really feel that, you know, this little area is really important. I don't know what this insignia is or what it stands for in the movie, but I like it. Was she like Matahari or something like this in this movie? Does anyone know? Let's set this up by putting a little bit of uh, good time with this detail here. You know, we'll always look back at every painting and say, wow, I wish I gave more attention to this. I wish I'd done something differently. But that's where you are. It's like a time capsule. And we have to embrace it when we look back at our work and say, okay, uh, you know, this is where I was. And, you know, I really like it. You know, I worked hard during this period. And you can see my growth, and that's how you have to look at it. So talking about looking at it, I gotta find my glasses so I can see this tight detail. Now the question is, where? Oh, here they are. Okay, great. So now I can really get in there and work on some of this detail right after I clean my glasses here. gotten pure ref please do so you will thank me pureref.com so just enjoy the process I would definitely 100% go with Badger if you're starting out and then message me and I'll be more than happy to help you out. 
Badger is the way to go. Haven't steered anyone wrong yet. Wow, that's cool, John. I'm glad. And so, as you can see, I'm just looking at getting the texture of this insignia without going too crazy. Think Vermeer, right? Think, think abbreviated. Think of uh, getting the technique uh, without having to be so literal. So you can see, working on this, it's really coming together and I'm not going crazy, meaning I'm not doing every little, you know, every little line here and there, just a sort of shorthand. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to get my liner brush. And I'm going to lift the top of my light mixture airbrush. And whenever you're, you're painting, always make sure that you, know, you get rid of the excess moisture. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work on a little bit of texture here and there. Maybe I'll go with the dark mixture. Let's see that. Now I'm still going to come back in with the white pastel. at the large shapes, the shapes that when I look at it, when I squint my eyes, what I see. And those are the shapes that we really have to uh, concentrate on doing regardless of anything else, those big shapes. go crazy with this, but definitely and you can use the wipes that you put in and create more texture because then you have both the light and the dark, which is very cool. And keep that one second rule going. It just keeps your mind in the game because, you know, we could just continue painting and not look and then before you know it, 
we have something that doesn't even resemble what we're painting. When you're getting into things like texture and stuff like that, the mind can definitely simplify things to the point where it's not paying attention. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. So this painting is for sale if anyone is interested when it's done tonight. right now with this insignia. I think it's looking pretty darn good so far. And let's, let's wash that off. And let's see where else we can move on. But let's go with the Fonz and Porter just very quickly. See where we can just put in some accents here and there. More pressure, more white's gonna come out. Less pressure, less white. What's true for the airbrush is true for every medium. So you see I put more pressure where there's more light. really make this pop a little bit. So that's that's basically where we want to go. Now the center line is where it's sort of hitting most. So with that I'm going to make sure that I'm putting more light in the center. Because this insignia is turning because her arm is turning. So remember that. So if the insignia is on the arm, regardless of what's happening with that insignia, it still has to follow the larger uh, rules of the arm because it's in the arm. It's a called stack form, which is one form on top of another, our stack form. And the the smaller forms that are on top always, always follow the rules of the larger forms. Okay, so happy with that. Now let's think. So let's move over to this arm here and make sure that we are 100% happy with that. So I'm going to go back in with my dark mixture airbrush. Both my airbrushes today are the Modified Extreme Patriot Arrows by Badger. Okay, so let's make this happen. I'm just going to do some of these dark spots here. I call them dark accents. You have your light accents and you have your dark accents. Both. All right, so here is my light mixture here.
Okay, so let's blow some air on there, dry it off a little bit. Remember, you never want to erase on anything that's wet, whether you're working on board, paper, whatever. Do not ever erase when it's still wet. Make sure it's dry, uh, and then you can come in, and let's get my mono eraser, and let's just uh, pull out some of the mid-tones. We're not pulling out the highlights. The highlights are done with the white pastel. But I do want it to feel like the light is just dancing off of this necklace here. Very abstract form. And with the light mixture here, and let's go ahead and put a little bit of texture here. Now there is some spidering. Like I said, spidering is normal. Uh, so you do have to control it. And spidering is not that you're doing anything wrong. It's just that you have to make adjustments. Adjustments usually always have to do with air pressure and distance. And very... A very minor adjustment you can make is that you can go ahead and you can adjust the uh, direction in which you're painting. But that's only a minor, a minor change. Okay, now we're going to come back in with the white pastel right here. Pastel I'm using is a pink pastel by Faber Castell White. Pastel pencil. Hey, Willie, thank you, my friend. I appreciate that, sir. She's coming along slowly, right, my friend? And um, little by little, we'll get there. And actually, it's, it's 10.33. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. And so I'm just going to go ahead and hit some of those specular highlights. Now, once I hit there, I also got to make sure that I echo that really beautiful highlight somewhere else. I don't want it all to be about that one spot. So that's why I always make sure that I, uh, if I put a specular highlight, that it's not, you know, the brightest. The brightest lights are going to be where I want them to be, and I want them to have the best contrast, you know? That's very important. Something that that one's kind of beat up. There we go beautiful highlight on Jean's cute nose. There we go just now I'm the director. And you want to be the director of your painting. So you decide where, where the eyes go, you know, of the viewer. You're the boss. Your reference is your guide, but ultimately you're the boss. ways to sharpen a stump. They're so inexpensive, John, I just chuck it. You know, uh, you can peel it and all that stuff. And I don't know, I, I haven't been that poor yet. I'm pretty poor, but I just throw it away. They're like 30 cents, John, you know. So that's always the best thing that I do. Uh, good question, though, because that, that actually 
That question stumped me for quite some time. <laughs> Bad joke, uh, but good pun. Uh, yes, so, you know, all throughout school, I'm like, how do you sharpen this bloody thing? But the reality was, is that, you know, it really isn't effective. You know, just get another one. That's what I think, John. But that's just my opinion. Light a lot of times in small areas is not, it sort of bounces, right? It sort of just hits the places in little dots. And sometimes, you know, that happens. It just hits in little tiny dots. Just keep, keep that going, you know, looking for those specular lights. Now here, I may use my Fonz and Porter because I have a little more control of how much white comes out. So let's just, just like that there. White is not just for highlights, but also making those areas start to turn, you know, making those, uh, you know, remember we, the whole thing is the contour, the, val the, the contour, the shape, the value, the edges of those shapes and how they border one another, the shapes within the shapes. Those are, that's basically what you should be looking for in that order. So now I can start looking at some shapes within the shapes here. I can even get a better stump here. Like I said, these things are so inexpensive. Whenever I go to an art store, I always pick up a package. Before you know it, you have like 30 packages in your studio and you can chuck these bad boys. So, you know, the orbital ridge is right here. So, you know, we're painting people. We're painting a person that has an anatomy and form and, you know, muscles and bone underneath the skin. So we have to make sure that we, uh, you know, as we progress in the painting of this process, that we continue, you know, we continue to get more sophisticated with those steps, right? It's it's, you know, it's very important and it's simple to do the contours, very important and it's simple to do the shapes, very important and it's simple to do the values, very important and it's simple to do the edges, very important and it's simple to do the, sh the shapes within the shapes. So uh, it's, a good, it's a good method and, uh, you know, it's something that, that I devised, I wasn't taught that per se. Uh, I was taught how to see, but, you know, as I paint more, I sort of come up with my own theories and whatnot, you know? So you see how now it's not just this shape, but this shape here is starting to turn, right? You know, it's not just, you know, it's not just this, this shape, but now it's the shapes within the shapes that actually causes everything to start to turn, to start to have volume. And that's a cheek in the shadows, right? It's not just a value and an edge. You can't do the sophisticated things in the early going of the process. You have to do it as you get further and further forward, you know? As 
you get further into the process is when you are going to actually get more sophisticated. So um, take your time. Don't try to do things before before they're ready. So, but I'm really loving the process, and I'm loving how, you know, like I said, you don't worry about the likeness. The likeness will reveal itself if you do things the right way, and then you are paying attention. Lights within the lights. Right in here, there's this beautiful reflected light in her eye socket here. See that? This is the stuff as, you know, I learn more and I'm coming up with my own technique and approach that these things start to reveal themselves. I think Beethoven said, you know, you know, continue to work until the art reveals its secrets. And I think that's true, but you guys are lucky because I'm revealing my secrets to you. So <laughs> that's a good thing. And so right here, although I do have the planes of the, uh, I can soften that up a little bit. I don't like how bright that highlight is on her eye to the, on the right. So let me just tap it with the an ED eraser and I can just bring that down a little bit. Still don't like it. I'm gonna just tap that down. There we go. So that's what we're doing now, is we're looking for the lights within the lights. Sometimes they're the reflected light, not necessarily, but this time it is the reflected light. So let's hit that reflected light over here. The reflected light is gonna create some volume and also some realism. There we go, some beautiful reflected light reflected off of her hands. Not her neck, because the neck's in shadow, right? So the reflected light has to come off something bright. It has to bounce off to something bright. So that's why we're seeing it hit there because it's bouncing off of her hands. So I'm gonna apply the white pastel and then calm it down with the neat eraser if I have to, you know? still seeing some reflected light over here on you know where her eye sort of comes out we're gonna see a little bit of reflected light you don't have to go into too much detail to get a strong image you know you can get away not get away but be a little more artful by not having to go in there and go too crazy now that's a little crazy and so I'm just going to tap that, just calm that down. We have, let's see what's going on in the forehead on this side, just a little bit of reflected light over here. And we're just going to indicate that just a little bit. The shapes within the shapes right now. Hey, what's up, Ron? Good to see you. How are you, my friend? There we go. A little bit of reflected light on her nose. Just a 
very little. And we can calm that down, which, you know, sometimes when you put the white pastel, you're like, oh my God. But you can always calm that down if you need to. Just calm it down just a bit. And you just lightly tap. Pressure is everything. How much pressure you put on the airbrush, the pencil, the paintbrush. You know, you'll find that pressure is really the secret sauce. Interesting, you have your cast shadow over here. It's slightly lighter at the edge of the cast shadow here. Might be something very minor. It is something minor that you do in the later stages. You don't worry about that during the beginning or the end. However, you want to make sure that at the proper time you give this attention. This will really help it to appear to have that luminous quality of your reflected light. You're painting light, you're not painting a person. Yes, you're painting a person, but in reality, you're painting the person, the object of the person, and uh, how by the light bouncing off of, of that person creates an image. If you think in that abstract way, it really helps. So let me go ahead with the light mixture first and see if I could make sure to catch that. This is where aim is so important. I said it's aim because there's going to be times when you're going to have to have really good aim and aim happens from practice. Yes, this is a very minor area, but you know what? It definitely um, lends itself to the image. Okay guys, I'm going to take a very quick water break. I will be right back. Don't go away. And we're going to complete this.
Okay, great. So let's see. So Mike said that uh, how long I've been using the two airbrush system. Did you just start that last couple of weeks or has it been years? No, actually the two airbrush system uh, really has just beginning to really come into fruition because I find when you get to the point of from the middle to the end, you want to be able to have that fluidity going from one value to the next. Otherwise, what you could do is you could be compensating using the medium mixture when you should use the dark mixture or using the light mixture over and over again before going into the uh, medium mixture and you don't want to be impeded by thinking oh I have to clean my airbrush and do that so you want to like using a hard and soft pencil when drawing you don't want to uh, you want to be able to make that decision you don't want to be held back to the fact that you don't um, uh, you don't want to be held back uh, because you're going to have to change your airbrush ink. So two airbrush system definitely works. Brad, good to see you, my friend. How's it going? How's everything? Yes, I just bought some 5050 white, illustration white, and some 4012 reduce. I believe it's coming tomorrow. Yeah, from Spray Gunner. Good company. Good company. Yeah, I think I would have to say Spray Gun is really good. I like their customer service, so uh, that's that's who I buy from. Okay, so now I'm moving around. When we were working before, we were working on the uh, negative. Uh, not the negative shapes, but the uh, shapes within the shapes and you know sometimes that means reflected lights or or whatnot so here What I'm going to do is I'm going to try the white pastel first and just see if it works if not we'll use the eraser but there is some there are some really nice uh, quiet detail going on in the darks here See that? It's not just this dark area, you know? It's, uh, it's, there's stuff going on, and we're not going to really be concerned with that until the very end. And trust me, there's an important for that, because you don't want to start painting the trees until you have the forest down. And of course I can use my kneaded eraser to calm down the white pastel. Well, that's not just, it's not to say I wasn't trying to get the right value or detail, but now is when we're really looking at those quiet, uh, you know, those quiet details in the darks, right? And the details within the details. That's why I say, you know, no painting is really ever finished. It really is just abandoned. Because you can continue. There's a whole world right in there. Sometimes you'll see me move around in the end really quickly because I'll see something that all of a sudden caught my eye and I want to hit it before I, I change my mind. So what I am, hey Todd, how's it going? How's everything? 
Now what I'm going to be offering is uh, pretty soon, and I'm trying to follow through, is a full class in the box, which would be, you know, the reference photos, the paper, uh, a projected image uh, onto the paper, the inks, and all the materials you need. And that's going to come in one box. It's going to be pretty exciting. And it's going to come with a full video. So I'm excited about that. So that's in the works. And this way you could follow along at your speed. Uh, you know, it could be in DVD form or it could be, uh, you know, just a image file, you know, movie file. So that's something that's coming coming down the pike. So I'm excited to offer that because not everyone can take classes live. Some people, it's better to go at their pace, so that's important. So I'm hearing that, and I'm definitely going, and I want it to be super affordable, you know? But have everything. You don't have to go buy any products or anything like that. You just open it up, and the whole project, almost having a, it's almost like having a uh, workshop right there, you know? Like six hours of instruction or something something crazy like that uh, so very cool so stay tuned for that if you're interested and you know as I'm saying you know we want to find those shapes within the shapes that's going to give the work Wow, that's great. Oh, wow, that's that's great news and very encouraging, Willie. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited because it's going to really be geared for, you know, those people who, you know, work full time like yourself and have a hard time, you know, sp stringing together a bunch of lessons. So this would actually be a, a good solution. So I'm so glad you're doing good, Todd. Always great to talk to you. There we go. So you see, now we're creating some interest in that shadow area. You know, it's not just this voided area. It's like, okay, there's something going on in those shadows. Same thing in here something going on in these shadows here. Oh, no problem, Todd. Better, better late than never, right? So that's cool. Whatever time you get here, I'm glad you're here. YouTube Red. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue with that whole thought of the lights in the darks, the, the, you know, the details within the details, and we're going to start just making those hair, those hands more luminous, right? Let's make that happen. I moved up the hand because evidently I could see on the screen that I was not visible, but moving that up helped. There we go. So you see more than just getting the it's more than just getting the correct values and it's more to get just the correct values and the shapes and the edges there's more to it it's that last stage is the lights within the lights you know the details within the details the shapes within the shapes but don't start thinking about that until the end you know uh, so that's important So I walked to the post office, I had an ink mixture uh, order, and I walked for an hour, half hour there, half hour back. That was not easy, guys, but I'm trying to get rid of my, my what do they call, uh, quarantine belly, you know, trying to take care of that. There we go. So. You know, trying to right the wrongs, you know.
Yeah, that's true, Willie. It's that long time period. Big gut, that's right. I'm taking care of that, my friend, Brad. I definitely got to make sure I get rid of that. And there's only one way to get rid of that is hard work, right, my friend? So I'm not afraid of hard work. I don't like it, <laughs> but I'm not afraid of it. <laughs> So, but yeah, you know, I'm not afraid of my, uh, my scale. I do say, I look at it and I take it on the chin and say, you know what? Tim's got to do something about this. Oh, I, yes, I do, uh, Todd, definitely. There we go. And so you see how... You know, really looking, not at the hand, right? I'm not thinking if this is a hand. That was all done before, the anatomy, everything. That was done. Now I'm just looking at the lights within the lights. Oh, oh, on my site, yes. I believe in the description field. Let me double check, my friend. So, if I go here. Oh, let me get that for you real quick, okay? I have two monitors now on my computer, so I can go from, I can go to my computer real fast. So let me get that link for you, I'd be happy to. Uh, I'm going to scroll down, let's see, you know, they change the link, you know, I don't know why they do that, just to make things difficult for Tim, I think. And let's see. Okay, there we are. Now I just have to go to my page. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you this link and hopefully this will work. And okay. So now with the two monitor system, I can actually go ahead and do this. There we go. Okay, so if you go ahead and click that, it should get you to where you need to go. So let me double check. Yep, and that should be, you'll see, you have uh, materials for India Ink and also the video equipment that I use. So hopefully that will work. Let me know if that works for you, my friend. Okay, back to the art. Let's see. Okay, so back to the hand, right? So, uh, so my guess says now with COVID-19, I don't know if it slowed them down with shipping. I'm sure it does because even, you know, shipping my India inks, it gets there what normally would take two days, takes three, maybe four days sometimes. So, yeah, it definitely is still slowing things down. I'm going to actually be a little bold with my dark mixture. And let's get a little forceful. There we go. What's really good about this whole thing I'm going to do, this package, which is going to include everything, is like going to be a workshop, right? A package that's going to come to you, a full workshop, is that you don't have to worry about drawing out the image. I'm going to have it drawn out for you, so this way you're going to have exactly what I have in the beginning. So you don't have to worry about getting the eyes right or everything. It's all, the linear aspects are going to be done, and it's going to be perfect. So you don't have to worry about that aspect, which I... I think it's important, I think it's a, you know, can trip a lot of people up, and I don't want that to happen. I want it to be a good experience. Oh, 
So guys, go ahead and try that link. See if it works. job for Fonz and Porter, right? So we're going to go ahead and work on some of the beautiful nails. One second rule, guys. Always the one second rule. Remember, if an inkjet computer, can, an inkjet printer can go ahead and paint something so and print something out so beautiful and so on the money with our brains being infinitely more complex we we're just getting in the way of seeing what we're painting right we're just getting in the way of it we don't want to get in the way accentuate those hands, those beautiful hands, because it's an important aspect of this. Just the slightest little thing that we do can really just improve the feeling of, of the painting as a whole. But remember, all this other stuff, all this stuff is not important unless we do the other things in the beginning, in the mid game, and even in the beginning of the end game. This is all. You know, it doesn't mean anything unless we do the other parts, which are more simple. But the thing is, with the technique, is that I'm taking the complex, right? Which is taking a photograph, an airbrush, and getting this at the end. If I had someone told me to do that, I would be like, oh my God, what are you talking about? There's so much to do. But with my system, I break it down right from the inks to... You know the line drawing to the the value study to the, uh, the the shapes and the edges and and now the details within the details. So it's not difficult if we make sure that we go ahead and wow. So that link. So that's interesting. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna find that link and I'll send it to you. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure what happened with that. And let's build up that light here on this knuckle. So yeah, this is the end of the end right here. 11 11 we have 19 minutes to go so this is this is it you know this is seven weeks uh, it's seven weeks doing this demonstration those of you who are watching this afterwards after it's recorded uh, so everyone so as we're finishing up, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 3,000. It's been a long time coming, let me tell you guys. Uh, it's been a very long time coming. Let me see. 
How many subscribers do we have right now? 29.79. We are 20, 21, we are 21 subscribers away from 3,000. Let's make 3,000, guys. Also, hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. Oh, it went fast. Thank you, Willie. I appreciate that. I definitely appreciate that, my friend. And, and let's see. So not bad, not bad, not bad. So let's go ahead and make this happen. So right now I'm still, I'm with the light mixture. And, but let's go ahead and put some real nice strong lights for this knuckle here. This knuckle is pointing, you know, it's going, it's much closer to, uh, much closer to the light source. So if it's closer, it's gonna be lighter. Thanks, Brad. Brad says, knocked it out of the park. One of your favorites. I really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, this is a, it's a long one, you know. Some take a little bit longer, but there's only one way to do it the right way, so I didn't want to rush it, you know. Definitely don't want to rush anything, especially when it comes to art. A lot of times, my clients are like, Wow, Tim, it's taking a little longer. And I'm like, no, there's one way to do it, and that's the right way. If it takes longer, I do apologize, but I'm putting my name on it, so it's going to make sure that, you know, I make sure I don't go crazy and, uh, you know, lose sight of what I'm trying to do, you know. So let's uh, take my dark mixture. Remember, the two airbrush system is so important in the mid game and the end game. The beginning, no two airbrush system. You know, you just want to stick with the light mixture uh, in the beginning. But as you go further down, you're going to be using different mixtures. Uh, what are the drawbacks of the two airbrush system? You got to clean two airbrushes instead of one. beautiful hard edges but you can see how those hands right now you know how they are hitting their light wow Bill I appreciate that very much thank you sir we're getting close to the end right it's uh, getting up there let's see so but yeah it's a lot of fun and I I really have to say that, you know, it's fun hanging out with you guys and uh, talk about technique and, and whatnot. There we go. Just now, like I said, that hand only works when we do the shapes within the shapes, right? Otherwise, it looked good, but it didn't look as good as it could have. Sometimes we can make it look worse. So we're going to go ahead and erase what I just did. You know, not every decision is going to be a home, a home run or, you know, or not every decision is going to be the best decision. So you have to have that critical analysis and really, you know, let yourself have it every now and then. Be hard on your painting while it's at the easel, because once it leaves the easel, everyone else will be hard on it. So, uh, it's a cool world out there, so do your best, you know, when you're at the easel. Don't cut any corners. Really just uh, go, go full force and uh, go hard or go home, they say. So, you know, when I played sports, it was all about, you know, giving it 100%. I wasn't the biggest guy, but I'm going to hit you like a big guy uh, when it's playing football or baseball or what have you, you know? My guest says, Tim, have you ever done work on motorcycles? Bet you could do nice work on bikes since they have small parts. You know, I'm not sure, you know? I mean, I'm thinking of, you know, if I get a commission, I definitely would. Uh, you know, when you're when you're poor, you definitely, I definitely wouldn't turn it down. But I think I would be able to do 
uh, something that someone would like, so definitely, if it comes by, I'll definitely say yes. Painting on anything is all the same, you know? It's basically all the same. Some nice reflected light in here on this part of her finger. See, there's some reflected light right there. You know, it's funny, I didn't want to, uh, I don't want to do this prematurely. Um, now, we have a few more minutes left, and I want to do some of the lights within this dark here. If I just leave it like this, it looks okay, but it can look better, and that's what I'm saying is, you know, just, you know, really try and just do your best. Don't hold back. I always say, you know, people can really kick your butt, you know? Uh, you know, when they're looking at your work and you're not there. So just know that you, def you know, you can defend the work at the easel, but you can't defend the work when you're not there. So, and I'm not saying to be timid and not, not to paint. Paint because it's just so much fun, but Make sure you pull out all the stops, you know? And that's it. Once you sign it, it's over. I don't recommend ever touching a piece after it's done, you know? I paint on toilet paper. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, Todd. And let's see. So you see how I'm starting to do the lights within that arm? And, like I said, I can just make that arm more luminous. Hey, David, how's it going? Good to see you. How you been, my friend? How you feeling? Always good to see you, David. always would shake, be, every, I shake it every time before I use it, you know, I just make sure it's tight, go like this, and then, you know, I mean, I don't see it uh, separating, but any medium you use, whether it's paint or ink, always give it a good shake, but make sure that cap is tight, my friend, I had that happen to me several times, where all of a sudden, the cap wasn't tight, and I had paint everywhere. Okay, so right here we have some lights within the darks, or the lights in, in the shapes, right? The shapes within the shapes. So, it's going to create more volume and just really feel like an arm a little more. So important. Over here we have some beautiful reflected lights. And let's go ahead and make this happen. See, these are the trees, and these are the leaves on the trees. We don't want to do this way too early. This is at the very end, you know? those lights within there, crucial, there we go, and let's see, where else can we, on this side, where the triceps are, and the biceps in her arm here, let's just make this happen a little bit, 
Wow, eight minutes to go, huh guys? Not bad, not bad. Eight minutes to go in this painting. I may do a couple of uh, touch-ups here and there off screen, you know? But just giving a little volume. Now, here I'm not seeing much difference in the edge, so I'm just going to make sure I pay attention to those edges. Don't create hard edges that aren't there, because then you just defeated the hard work that you did. So definitely don't want to do that. Uh, staying pretty true to the photograph this time uh, but I did work on this in Krita and uh, what I may do is just maybe do a fade from the top down just a little bit uh, that might be a good idea to do but yeah really not much because uh, I think it worked the gray of the background is also some of the values in the face so it kind of makes the her go back in space a little bit, which I think was a good thing. Um, there are some times, but if I'm ever going to work on a background, it's going to be in the digital art. You program manipulating the photo and then doing it that way. But I would never make that decision late like this. And I would never make that decision without seeing it first on, on digital. Because, uh, you know, we could ruin work that way because we might see it in our mind like, hey, that's a good background to do. But once we put it in, we're like, wow, that was a bad decision. Then it's too late, right? So, so important. No, the ink doesn't separate, which is really cool, but anything could have some separation to it. Uh, so you definitely always want to shake it. I don't think it separates, uh, but definitely go ahead and, uh, you know, shake it up. What's really good about the inks is are that it does not, uh, they do not uh, clump up. So it'll stay in a pure liquid form. Uh, so that's good. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that, Willie. Uh, thank you so much. This, this was a fun one, I have to say. I do like the tight detail that she really uh, warranted in this. You know, each painting will warrant what we're gonna do, you know, uh, which is very important. Uh, so far, no settling at all, you know, with the Airbrush India inks, which I'm happy, but you know, like, you know, there could be some, you know, depending on how long, uh, always good to shake it. I always shake it as, uh, as my guest says. It's a good idea with everything. Good habit to have, right, Mike? Wow, 11.26 already. Wow, this was, this was a fun, fun project we worked on, I have to say. I really did enjoy it. It's going to go down in one of the better ones. It's also why I really enjoy working, um, one of the reasons why I really enjoy working uh, with the same model, because you really get to know them, and just as you can see here, you know, working with uh, with Gene Tierney. This is like my fourth Gene Tierney that I did, maybe fifth. And you can see that, you know, the work gets uh, a little more personal. And, you know, just a little more insight 
into uh, the model or subject matter. minutes of this live stream. Take care, Brad. Good to see you, my friend. And uh, yeah, Bill's doing some great things with these inks, boy. Uh, unbelievable. So I really appreciate, you know, him working and doing the demonstrations and showing what the inks can really do, which is really fantastic. Like I said, guys, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. go ahead and subscribe. Let's get 3,000 with 21 away. 3,000 subscribers is going to be good, you know. It's 3,000 on the way to 100,000. So it's all because of you guys. Willie, have a good night, my friend. Take care. Okay, guys, it's 1130. We did it. Here she is, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Wendy. Take care. I appreciate it. And so, everyone, I hope you have a great night. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. I'm going to keep this on. David, take care. Uh, we're going to keep this uh, on. Todd, take care. Bill, uh, Bill Kennedy, and, uh, you know, Mr. Bill, uh, Bill Sneakin. Uh, fantastic artists. All you guys are just fantastic. Have a great night, guys. Take care of yourselves.